Welcome back everyone to another ESR build video. Today is going to be the update for the Almost Immortal Warrior. Now this is a tank build, it's a Dragon Knight, and it is for the Wrathstone DLC. It's been used for a couple of years now, it's had multiple alterations. This one, however, is up to date. So, if you've used this before, hopefully you won't be too disappointed with a couple of the changes. But if you have got the previous setup, don't worry, it still works just fine. So if you want to keep it as it was before and not change a damn thing, you are more than welcome to do that. However, there are some alterations, and I'm going to go through them bit by bit. But first of all, we're going to get into the stats. Now, there are two types of food we're using here, depending on the situation. So I'm going to show you both variations and both stats. So we'll start off with the recovery food, first of all. We'll put on a potion, and we'll see our stats. Now, first of all, we are sitting on 48.9k max health with 10k max magic and 12.8k max stamina. With 2,471 mag recovery, with 32k resist on spell, and almost 31 on physical now if you get a minor ward and minor resolve you will actually borderline cap out so that will be covered if you get combat prayer in your group so we're not quite cap resistances but we're not far off we're almost there now we're using an atronach munda stone and of course we are using the recovery food max health max recovery food so this is for people that want to utilize their magic abilities a lot more often but are capable of heavy attacking when they need to to cover their sustain for their stamina however if you are not comfortable with that you can of course use max health max stam food your recovery will go down a little bit but your flat stats will be somewhat higher so in this instance you will actually have 49.5k health which is a little bit more and you'll have 18.8k stamina just remember of course we are 64 points into max health because of certain skills scaling off of max health so the higher the better but if you want to go lower you can and you can extend your stamina bar with your attributes here if you're not comfortable with the way it's set up anyway now we're going to go into the skills and these will be explained in a lot of detail so if you are not familiar with these i would not advise you to skip if you are familiar with them then of course you're welcome to but if you do skip and you ask questions that are already answered in the comment section below i will not be responding to them so just bear that in mind now, first of all, we use an Igneous Shield. This comes from the Earth and Heart skill line. It's the third ability you unlock, so you will need a couple of these on your bar while leveling, just to make sure you can open this up. Starts off as obs Obsidian Shield. Morph it into Igneous Shield. Now, the other variation of this does have Major Mending on it as well. As you can see at the bottom of the description, it has Major Mending increasing your healing done by 25% for three seconds once you activate it. The other morph has six seconds, not three. But this shield is stronger. So, not only does this give you and your group almost a 4k damage shield, based on your max health but it does also give you an additional 150 percent so for you this is a massive shield and you can basically mitigate a shit ton of damage before your health bar even gets hit and consider that your resistances do count underneath your damage shield so it's not really just a 4k damage shield you have to consider resistances as well so it's very very powerful now this doesn't require a massive magicka bar to be able to be utilized magicka as a whole, as a resource, the more you have, obviously, the stronger skills are. But this particular one doesn't get affected that way. This one is affected by your max health. So the higher your health, the bigger the shield. So yes, if you have 70k health, you'll have a massive damage shield and so on and so forth. And the lower your health, obviously, the less effective it is. So we're kind of in the middle here. We're pushing around the 50k mark without minor um, toughness or ebon or anything like that. So we're sitting on a nice comfy damage shield that you can protect your group with. Now this will help protect up to six people. As you can see, you stamp your foot and you get a purple barrier over your health bar, which is basically the amount of damage you can take before it even hits your health. It's very, very strong. You need this in your rotation as much as possible. But where I was trying to make my point about the magical bar not being large, you don't need it to be. What you need to do instead is be able to use this more often. Have high recovery, which is why we have high magical recovery in our stats. It's the ability to be able to do this more often and keep your group safe. Now, if you're using the recovery food and potions at the same time, it's very easy to sustain this. You just keep it up every couple seconds or so, or maybe every three to five seconds, and you are laughing. Now, that lit up... Uh, buff in the bottom there the yellowy greeny color one that's your major mending bear that in mind when we get to our next skill our next skill is green dragon blood now this is in the dragon uh, draconic power skill line it's the third ability you unlock so you will need a couple of these while you're leveling now what this does is this first of all turns you kind of see through so you can see your heart 
pulse in the middle, which looks awesome. But this particular morph, coming from the original, by the way, Dragon Blood, morph it to Green Dragon Blood, this particular one is based off of your max health as well. So, this will heal you based on 37% of your missing health. So, if you have a very small amount of max health, you're going to need to use this very, very often, which can get expensive. However, if you have a large amount of health, you don't have to use it very often because it will take you longer and longer and longer and longer to get to low health, which means you'll only have to use it very rarely. But when you do, you are presented with a massive heal equivalent to a percentage missing, not a flat amount. So, this is a very, very useful skill to use in an oh shit situation, but keep this up as a buff also at all times because this will also give you major fortitude and major endurance increasing your your um stamina and health recovery by 20 percent for 23 seconds so while it's active you get that bonus also you get minor vitality increasing your healing received by eight percent for the whole duration that's on so don't just activate this as a heal have it on all the time one more thing to note, you can see this is 37% of your missing health. Remember we said that this has major mending on it, which increases your healing done. If you activate this first, then check the skill, instead of 37% of your missing health, it's 45%, and that's not including crits. So this is a very, very powerful heal, quite possibly one of the most powerful heals in the game if utilized correctly, but it does rely on you having high health to be able to utilize it effectively. Remember, if you're a squishy, squishy tank and you have 25k health, you are going to be spamming this and you're going to run out of juice way too quickly. But the more health you have, the better. The next ability is Pierce Armor. This is in the one hand and shield skill line. This is the first ability to unlock. You can't miss it. Starts off as Puncture, morph it to Pierce Armor. The reason for this is because if you morph it to this particular version, you get Major Fracture and Major Breach on the target when you stab them, reducing their physical and spell resistance by 5280 for 12 seconds. Now this does do damage, which isn't very important because we don't stack into damage, but what is important is that this is a taunt. If you are not familiar with this as an MMORPG, this is going to be different because most other games have kind of an aggro counter. In this game, a taunt is you have aggro. You stab it, you taunt it, it's on you. It's not going to hit other people. AoEs might, yes, but the actual focus of the boss is going to be on you. Same goes for ads and all that kind of stuff. But instead of an aggro counter, this does have a duration. Now this lasts 15 seconds. But as you look, if you look carefully at the bottom, there is a debuff that applies, which I've already spoken about, which lasts 12 seconds. So the debuff is lower than the actual duration of the taunt. So what you really want to do is instead of keeping this up every 15 seconds, keep it up every 12. That way you can have 100% uptime on the debuff. One more thing to note, do not let this fall off. A very, very bad practice as a tank, which will make you a terrible tank, is to let your taunt run out, then reapply it. Don't do that. That small window there is enough for the boss to turn around and kill the group. Make sure you reapply it before it runs out. I can't be any clearer than that. Don't let it run out. On some bosses, I think there's only one actually, but we'll just say some, just in case there's a couple more. We'll say the Manticora in Sanctum Orphidia. That boss, if you over-spam taunt, can enrage and run around the room and slap everyone to death. On that particular boss, reapply it like every 10 seconds. Don't go any faster than that because she starts going mad. Anyway, above all, make sure you reapply it at least every 12 seconds and don't let it fall off. This one here, Absorb Magic. This is insane. This is also in the Sword and Board skill line. Starts off as Defensive Posture. Morph it into Absorb Magic. Now what this does, as you can see, is this will give you a 24k damage shield. And it will heal you, after it has gone, for 17% of your maximum health. I can't be any clearer than that. Max health. A percentage so the higher your health the bigger this heal you don't have to be a maths expert to figure that out but obviously the higher your health the more effective the skill is this also while well slotted will give you block mitigation so you'll take eight percent less damage and your blocks will cost eight percent less as well this is a very effective skill for mitigation and keeping your health up but how this damage shield works is simple you can see this coats my health bar just like the other damage shield did but it doesn't work the same way this doesn't absorb all damage. This only absorbs magic projectiles. So anything that is created via a spell. So fire, flame, frost, magic, anything like that. If it hits you with a single target hit, this will be consumed instantly. And heal you at the same time. So when you're up against Lord Warden and such like that, and he's firing machine guns at you, every single time you pop this, every machine gun shot will consume it. And again, and it will consume it again. But you will heal every time it runs out. Also, by the way, if you don't actually get hit by any magic projectiles and you just have it running, you will, of course, heal when it runs out. Now, 
The trick to this is, of course, to use it wisely, but if you do just slot it on your bar and don't activate it ever, you will still get the passive effects from it. It's very, very strong indeed. But it also stacks with these, by the way. So if you have another uh, damage shield up and that as well, and you get hit with a big projectile, the other damage shields will be considered. And so is your resistance. This is a damage shield. Your resistances are considered. And again, as you can see, it was 17% of your max health. But if you put Igneous Shields first, it's 20% of your max health. Major Mendon buffs it. Also, Mind of Vitality buffs it, but it doesn't show it in your stats. Healing Received bonuses will stack on top of Healing Done. They just don't show in the actual tooltips for the abilities. Now, the next ability is Bone Surge. This is crazy strong. Now, this is in the Undaunted skill line. It's the fourth ability to unlock. You're going to need to do some dungeons and achievements to unlock this. Starts off as Bone Shield. You want to morph it to Bone Surge. Now, when you activate this, you will create a damage shield for yourself, absorbing 30% of your max health. So, this here is based off of your max health. And we have a uh, 4k damage shield timed by 150%. So, it's massive. At the same time, we also have Bone Shield, and as you can see, my health bar is almost half full because these two do stack together. So you can alternate. One is Magic, one is Stamina, and you can either use one all the time and then use the other one when you run short, or you can stack them both together. It's entirely up to you. But this has additional bonuses as well. This can be taken as a synergy by nearby friendly targets, and if somebody takes a synergy, three other people, themselves included, will actually get a damage shield equivalent of 50% of their max health. Again, resistances are considered underneath damage shield, so this is an incredibly strong damage shield. So not only can they take the 50% bonus from this, they can also get a 4k damage shield from this. Now, if you consider most DPSs, let's say with Eben can hover around the 20k health mark, if you give them something that's 50% of their max health, they're sitting on a 10k damage shield already with this synergy. Then you activate this for a 4k, they're on 14k damage shield over their health bar before they even start with their own mitigation and shields and such. It's very, very powerful. You can protect your group all day long with these abilities. And another bonus. If somebody does take the synergy, they will be granted major vitality, increasing their healing received by 30% for 6 seconds as well. So their healing received is increased. They have a damage shield, they're harder to kill, and any health they've lost will be recovered much, much faster. It's a very strong ability. You should utilize these a lot. Igneous shield and bone shield combined is crazy. And also, just note, this does cost stamina, and we are running on a low stamp pool, so you will need to heavy attack inside mechanics. Heavy attacks, by the way, will give you resources back. Now, if a target is off balance and you heavy attack it, you'll get double resources back. And previously, when you heavy attacked a blocking target, you wouldn't get anything back at all. But now you do get 50% of the over amount back. So it's really, really strong indeed. So make sure that if you're not being heavy attacked, as long as you've got control of the fight, and you know that the incoming attack on you is not going to A, kill you, or B, knock you over, heavy attack in between mechanics and keep your shields up. Just keep heavy attacking and shields up all the time. You won't run out of juice, and you don't need to struggle with resources as far as damage shields are concerned. It's really, really nice. So pay attention to your mechanics, learn where your window of opportunity is and take advantage of it. On the lower end of the stam build, where we have the recovery food, so we've got 12.8k stam, of course you need to heavy attack a lot more often. On the higher end, where we're sitting about 18.8, .8, you don't need to heavy attack quite as much, but you may need to utilize it as and when you need to, and it, you should, basically. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Now, this is absolutely broken. This is in the one-handed shield skill line you need level 50 in one handed shield to unlock this is our main ultimate our front bar this is our oh shit button starts off a shield wall morph it to shield discipline when you activate this you will block for seven seconds for free now when you block you move around quite slowly when you activate the ultimate you do not you run around at full speed and you're blocking for nothing and all your recovery is working so for example when you're blocking here i'll use some stamina now when you're blocking you don't get stamina back However, when that ultimate is present, you do. It doesn't count as though you're holding block with your with your block button. It counts as just a free block. Also, while this is active, any one hand and shield abilities are free. 100% reduced cost. So you can reapply loads and loads of taunts if you want to. You can spam absorb magic if you want to. You can use whatever is in your skill line for free until this runs out. This is absolutely incredible. If you need to res someone really, really quickly, or you need to just get some resources back, which we'll get to in the passives, this is a very, very strong ultimate in case you get in trouble. So I would highly recommend you put this on the front bar at all times. Back bar. This is a bit of a flex slot. Elusive Mist is not used by many tanks out there, but it should be in certain mechanics. Now, what this does is from the Vampire skill line. You can use this for other abilities as well. We'll go over these in a second. 
Now, you want to get this as mist form to start with, morph it to elusive mist. Not only will it speed you up while you're in this form, but you will take 75% reduction to all damage. Now, this also renders you immune to knockbacks and uh, snares and all that kind of stuff, but you will be knocked over by major bosses. So do not use this on an actual boss. But during mechanics of ad pulls and all that kind of stuff and really oh shit situations, especially on VAS hard mode, if or any VAS in fact, when the fire comes down, misform, you will be fine. You will not die. You'll barely take any damage. Also, the axes in Alfarian Archive. If you get into a situation where you're almost out of uh, resources, you're really, really in trouble. You think you're going to die and they're all about to heavy attack you. Pop this and they will hit nothing but air. Especially War Priests and such as well, they will go straight through it. Yes, you'll take a minimal amount of damage, but because it's mitigated by such a large amount, you won't be knocked down and you won't die. Also, you can use it as a speed bonus instead of wasting your stamina. You can just use it to run with. But that is very, very situational. Don't use it all the time. Just certain fights if you're an experienced tank or if you're an up-and-coming experienced tank and you're starting to understand how this works, this is a very, very useful tool. But it's not for everybody. What you can also slot here if you want is you can put invigorating drain so if you do have a window of opportunity where you have like a couple of seconds where you're not really doing anything and you don't need to heavy attack because resources are full you don't need to block because nothing's coming in you can fire off this ability here and what this will do is this will heal you once a second for 22 percent of your missing health which will actually go up higher if you use ignis shield first but during that time that channeled beam of three seconds you will gain five ultimate a second this is absolutely insane and very very powerful on an off tank as well so for example if you're in a fury and archive and you already have a main tank on valerial and you are the off tank you can literally just spam this all day long and just build war horns and it's insane it's a very very powerful ability this again is in the vampire skill line starts off as drain essence you want to morph it to invigorating drain so this is your flex slot for these couple abilities here or anything else you really want to put in there now Next up is Unstoppable. Now, of course, we do have some different gear on this character in terms of the monster helmet, so we don't have Major Warden, Major Resolve all the time. If you have Major Warden, Major Resolve in your group, i.e. a Warden is in your group giving out that buff, fair enough, you don't necessarily need to slot this. But if you don't, you will need to bring your own resist buff. So, this is from the Heavy Armor skill line. This is called immovable at first morph it to unstoppable it's expensive so don't spam it it lasts 30 seconds it gives you major ward and major resolve giving you 5280 physical and spell resistance for 30 seconds which is a very long duration for this type of buff so very very handy indeed but what this also does is this will grant you immunity to knock down and disable effects for four seconds so it's basically like popping an immovable potion when you activate it so I'm now immune to knockdown for 4 seconds, and I have the buff for 30 seconds. But if I reapply it, if I have to, I can not be knocked down again. Now, this is increased in its duration based on the amount of heavy armor pieces you are wearing. So it says 4 seconds, but we actually get 6 out of this. So it's very, very nice indeed. As you can see on the timer here, 5, 4, 3. You can, you can count down stuff. You know how numbers work. When it gets to 0, that's your final second. It actually lasts for 6 seconds overall. It's really, really nice. The little blue one you can see there with the diamonds in it. So this is your knockdown immunity and your resist buff combined. Now, the reason we don't use the Draconic Power version, this uh, hardened armor, is for two reasons. One, it only lasts 20 seconds, uh, although it does apply damage shield, which is quite nice. And two, it costs Magicka. Now, we want to utilize our Magicka as much as possible. We weren't using a resist buff in the past because it was on our monster helmet. So we want to make sure we've still got the same Magicka sustained. So instead, we put it onto our stam. So we're using this version. But when I get to the weapons and the glyphs and a little bit of an alteration there to what we've used in the past, this will start making a bit more sense. We can have some really high uptime on immunity to knockdown effects, which is really, really nice. As you can see, my weapon's going. If you are familiar with the game, you know why. But we won't worry about that right now. Next up is Inner Rage. This is from the Undaunted skill line. This is your ranged taunt. You need a ranged taunt on your bar because sometimes enemies are at range. And instead of you running up to them and stabbing them and bringing all the enemies with you and making a complete mess of the place, you do want to control the room a bit, keep your enemies next to you, and pull them in with this. Now it's got a 28 meter range. It starts off as Inner Fire, morph it to Inner Rage. So it costs Magicka and it has a synergy effect to it where you have a 38% chance for somebody to take the synergy if they're 15 meters away or more. And they will actually make a bomb that just grows and then explodes and does loads and loads of damage in area of effect, which is quite nice. But above all, this is your range taunt. So anything that's near you, you stab it and debuff it. Anything at long range, you range taunt it and it will come to you. Unless it is a ranged attacker, in which case we're now going to get to that. Now, 
Obviously, when they get to you, make sure you stab it to debuff it. But initially, you want to get its attention to it so it comes over to you. Next up is Unrelenting Grip. This is an Ardent Flame skill line. You need a couple of these on your bar to start with just to level up the skill line to get this unlocked. But once you get it, you want Fiery Grip and you want to morph it to Unrelenting Grip. The other variation of this takes you to them, not them to you. This pulls in targets. It chains them into your feet. And it's got a bit of a bonus to it as well. If the target is immune or on a cooldown for immovable and stuff like that or stuns, they obviously can't be pulled. But you didn't waste anything because you'll get 100% of the cost back. Also, you can utilize this as a little bit of a cheeky uh, maneuver. If you put this onto a boss and you have to move around really quickly, obviously they can't be chained, but you do get major expedition for using it. So you can literally just uh, deliberately chain a boss, get your magic back, and you're faster now so you can move to the next position. That helps a lot in um, Cloud Rest, by the way. Whenever the last boss is supposed to be moving, whenever Zamaj is supposed to move, just before she goes into the ground, give her a quick chain and then run to wherever she is next, and you'll get there a lot, lot quicker. But above all, this is your kind of control ability. This one's a range taunt for things to come to you. This one is a chain for you to bring them to you. So you can utilize the two together or one or the other and then stab them when they get there. It's entirely up to you. Depends on the situation. However, we're going to go over taunting range targets real quick. Now, for argument's sake, this pillar here is an archer. And I'm standing over here. If I range taunt him, he's going to start hitting me now, but he's not going to move because I'm still inside his range. So how do I get him here? I want to chain him, but he's like a banner boss. He won't come to me because he can't be chained. So what do you do? Basically, you move out of his range. If you are out of his range, he's going to come to you until he can reach. So if you get outside of his range until he gets to roughly where this shadow is here, then come back into his feet and start taunting him, all the melee guys that are with you will come with you. So you manipulate range to bring him in, and then you come back in to meet him. The melees will always follow you anyway as long as they've got aggro. So it doesn't matter where you stand, they're constantly going to be chasing. And that's how you manipulate range. You have to go outside their range for them to come to you. It takes a bit of practice. Depends on which content you're actually in. But just remember that little tip there and you'll be able to start utilizing it. Now, next up is Choking Talons. This is our maim or debuff and also control ability. This is in the Draconic Power skill line. We start this off as Dark Talons, morph it to Choking Talons. The other one does extra damage, but this one is for debuffing. Now, basically what this does, you can't really see it here because there's no enemies, but you can see some effect on the ground. The size of that effect, basically, all enemies in inside of there, up to six, in fact, will be caught in the Talons. Now, they'll be immobilized on the spot, if they can be immobilized, for four seconds. So they won't move, they're not going anywhere. And at the same time, they will have minor maim attached and reducing their damage done by 15% for seven seconds. And there's a synergy effect from this as well. So if someone's quite close by and they take the synergy, they'll do a massive boom and loads and loads of damage, which is really, really handy for AoE um, DPS. And of course, um, if anyone's using synergy-based sets. Now, the minor maim can be acquired another way. This is for area of effect and it costs magic. But if you're up against a single target boss and there's no adds, or maybe there's just one add for the entire fight, you might not need to use this because this doesn't actually immobilize bosses, although it does minor maim them. You might want to use your almost 4k magicka for more damage shields, for example, and this is a little bit too um, negative to your sustain. So in that case, what you do is you go down to your one hand and shield and you slot heroic slash, which starts off as low slash. Now this doesn't immobilize targets and if it's a boss it doesn't matter anyway but what this does do is this will give you minor heroism giving you one ultimate every one and a half seconds for nine seconds that helps generate ultimates and stuff like that and at the same time this will inflict minor maim on the target also but instead of for seven seconds it will do it for 12 and it costs stamina also note if you are using this and you have the block ulti currently on this is free so there's an option for you there single target use heroic slash add pulls use choking talents now, the ultimate on the back bar is a bit of a flex slot. Now, aggressive warhorn, you are going to need this. Well, if you can get it, you do need to get some alliance points to unlock this. This is in the assault skill line. It's the ultimate that you get from here. You do need to go, not necessarily to Cyrodiil, but you do have to get AP. So you can go into battlegrounds and just lose on repeat. It doesn't matter if you suck. As long as you take part, you will get alliance points. So just go in, get wrecked, or have fun and wreck everybody else, whatever. And once you've got enough points, get out, buy this, and don't go back. Simple as that. So unlock it as soon as possible and then just dump Battlegrounds. But it's really, really fun doing Battlegrounds as a tank anyway because you just get to chain everyone at death royalties and people hate it. But anyway, this is Warhorn. Morph it to Aggressive Warhorn. You fire off um, 
A really loud Warhorn, which lasts 30 seconds, which is 243 ultimate. Should be 250 on the Dragon Knight, but we'll get to that in passives. And this will buff you and your group. This will give everyone a 10% increase to max stamina and max magic, so their resources are higher. And of course, this will give everyone major force, increasing their critical damage done by 15% for 9 seconds. This is absolutely incredible. A very, very essential tool to upping the DPS in certain moments in fights and stuff like that. So this is very, very good to, to utilize this as much as you can. But if you don't have this, or if you've already got enough Warhorns covered in your group, or if you just want an extra O ship button, you can slot Magma Shell. Now, Magma Shell is from the Earth and Heart skill line in the Dragon Knight skills, and this is very, very strong. This is basically your Immortal button. If you morph this from Magma Armor to Magma Shell, you will not only only take 3% damage from all damage types that you take every single hit for 10.8 seconds, but you will also give nearby allies 100% damage shield. And this is absolutely insane. For them, it's 9 seconds, but you will also get the damage shield as well. So, you can have 100% damage shield, plus bone shield, plus igneous shields, plus your magicka absorb, all that kind of stuff, all mixed into one, and people can also benefit from it. So, you've got two options. You've got your DPS push ultimate, or you've got your protection ultimate for your group. Either one, whichever situation you're in, depends on your group overall, but you've got a choice of two, so that is up to you. Now, onto passives, the really important stuff. So, we will go into skills. Ardent Flame, first of all. We're only using one ability here, so this isn't essential. I know a lot of people like to use Fiery Breath and then morph that to Burning uh, Breath, which can increase the damage done to the targets by 10% if they're using fire damage. But if you've got a Dragon Knight DPS in the group and they are magical based, they're probably going to be using it anyway, so that's not essential. You can use this if you want. I know a lot of people like it. Although I've seen some tanks um, not actually understand how it works. And they've been breathing on the targets trying to get more flame damage out when everyone's doing physical or lightning. Which is hilarious. But this is up to you. You can buy this ability if you need it. Anyway, above all, we're only using one ability here. So, this one here increases the damage of your burn and poison status effects. That one does actually apply a little bit because we are doing some poison damage on our build. Which I'll get to when we get to the sets. So, you will need this. Not for the damage output, however. You will need this to get resources back. Now, if you apply burning to the enemy, you restore 500 magi magicka. We're not doing any burning because although I've mentioned you can use this, we don't actually use it. Now, the only thing that we do is poison based on one of our sets. And if you do attack stuff with poison and you do get the status effects, not only does the poison damage increase, but you will get 500 stamina back once every five seconds if this affects something. So this actually works towards your sustain. So if we do poison damage, we can get stamina back even if we're blocking. So we get really nice recovery on that. So make sure you get this passive. This one isn't really important. Direct damage you deal from Ardent Flame abilities reduces the movement speed of the target. Meh, we're not using it. Um, so you can dump this. This one here increases the damage of your Fiery Breath, Searing Strike, and Dragon Knight standard abilities. We're not using any of them, so you won't need this either. And increases the damage of your Flame Area Effect abilities. We're not using any of those. But it does decrease the poison ability cost by 25%. So if you do slot any poison abilities, I don't know why you would want to. But if you did, then of course you can get this. But for us, we don't need these three passives here. We just need Combustion. Draconic Power, these are quite important. Iron Skin, of course, increases the amount of damage you can block by 10%. We are a tank. We want to take less damage. Do it. Uh, while a Draconic Power ability is active, your healing received is increased by 12%. Now remember... Now remember, Dragon Blood has minor vitality on it, increasing the healing received that we gain by 8%. Just for being active. But also for being active, we gain this. So we've got two bonuses to healing received there. One 8% and one 12%. That's massive. Make sure you keep that ability active at all times. Also, increases your health recovery by 5% for each Draconic Power ability slotted. That's not that essential because we are using Vampire abilities anyway. So our recovery is quite low. But you can get it if you want that minor bonus. Uh, but what does make a difference is this increases your range of your instant melee attacks by 2 meters. This is an instant melee attack. It doesn't have a cast time. So this is 7 meters, not 5. So it's really, really handy. Especially against big targets with an awkward hitbox. So do make sure you get this. And this increases your spell resistance by 3300. Our spell resistance is bloody huge. So make sure you get this. Earth and Heart, these are essential. Increase the duration of your Earth and Heart abilities by 20%. That means our Igneous Shields last 7.2 seconds instead of 6, and our Magma Shell lasts 10.8 instead of less amount of time. So, basically, make sure you get that to extend those two abilities. You will want this, especially. 
Now, Battle Roar is mad. When you cast an ultimate ability, you restore 52 health, 46 magicka, and 46 stamina for each ultimate ability cost. So, the more expensive the ultimate, the more you get back. So, you want to use the most expensive ultimate at all times if you can help it. But if you do have to use your oh shit button, yes, it's cheaper, but you will still gain back resources and a lot of them. Now, this particular build has got reduction to cost on ultimate, but the Dragon Knight doesn't consider the reduction to cost in terms of your resource return. So you will still get back its maximum cost worth in resources. It's really, really nice. So utilize this as an oh shit button and you will get resources back. But the most of the time, if you can help it, Magma Shell or Aggressive Warhorn as much as possible to get as much back from this resource gain passive. Also, when you cast an Earth and Heart ability, you and your group will gain minor brutality for 20 seconds, increasing your weapon damage by 10%. Just for using this, you shield the group, you get Major Menden, and of course, you give the group minor brutality. So you are supplying a buff, which is handy. Also, while in combat, you generate three ultimate once every six seconds. So again, another bonus. I've activated it once, three ulti. Great. And finally, when you cast an Earth and Heart ability, you restore 990 stamina. Remember when we block, we don't get stamina back? Well, when you use Ignis Shields, you do. Look at my bar. It actually goes up just by spamming it. And of course, remember, we have high recovery. So we can keep our resources up all day just by keeping our shields up. And if we alternate, our magic goes up ridiculously fast and you can keep going from there. If you need to, you throw in a heavy attack and a shield as well and you'll get even more back. It's crazy. Our resource return, if you understand the mechanics, are very, very high. But don't be scared. We're a chunky tank. You don't have to hold block all day. You can, but you don't have to. So know when you can heavy attack. It's really, really important. Now, one hand and shield, you want all of these. Very simple. Get every single one. There's no reason not to get them all. Starts off with this one. Reduce the cost of your one hand and shield abilities by 10% and reduces the cost of blocking by 36%. Essential stuff, your taunts and absorb magic are cheaper. And of course, your blocking is cheaper as well, so we can have longer uh, time blocking and keep our stamp all up for longer. This increases the damage of those skills, but that's not really relevant, although it does um, increase the amount of damage we can block, so you do need it. This will improve your standard bash attacks, dealing more damage, but that's not important. But what is important is the reduction to cost, because we want to make sure it's cheaper. If you bash to interrupt, you can run out of stamina really, really fast. You want to get that cost down. Also, increase the amount of damage you can block from projectiles and range attack by 14%, which is huge. And increase the movement speed while blocking. When you block, you are sluggish as hell, but with that passive, you're a bit quicker. Get all those. Light armor, don't need it. We're not using any. Medium armor, don't need it. We're not using any. Heavy armor, we are using all of them because our passives here are based off of how many heavy pieces we have. So, this one will give us 2, 5, 3, 6 resistance across the board for each piece worn. We're wearing 7 pieces. We're getting a maximum bonus here. Constitution as well. 7, 5, 7 stamina back every 4 seconds and magicka back just for being here based on how many heavy armor pieces we have. The less pieces you have, the less effective this is. Obviously, we've got his max potential. So you've got 757 there. You've got 990 here. Plus, you've got what you get back from your heavy attacks. Plus your potions. You can see where we're going with this. Our recovery is actually really, really nice. Now, this will increase your max health by 2% per piece worn. And we have 7, so obviously we get a 14% bonus there. Revitalize, this is based on just having 5 pieces. But remember, heavy attack is one of the ways that we sustain. And if we do heavy attack with 5 pieces or more worn, our stamina or magicka from our heavy attacks, whichever one we're using, in fact, we're using the stamina versions, are increased by 25%. So we get shit tons back when we heavy attack. It's really, really important that you do heavy. Now, increases your healing received by 8% for wearing 5 pieces or more. 8% here. 8% here and 12% for having it active. We have massive healing received. Now, Vampire is mental. So, stage 2 or higher, you will actually generate 10% increased max magicka and stamina, which is crazy. And, of course, for being 3 or higher, stage 3 or higher, you will reduce the amount of damage you take by up to 33% while your health is under 50%. Now, um, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out, but if you have 25 to 30k health, 50%, let's say, for 30k health is around the 15k mark. At 15k health, you start taking less damage, which is a bit squishy. However, if you have 50k health, you start taking less damage at 25k. If you're 60k, you start taking less damage at 30k. You can see where we're going with this. The higher your health, the more effective this passive is, and the lower you can go, risky, but take less damage and stay alive for longer because you have that extra buffer. You don't have to go really, really low and just 
get one hit and be lucky because of the passive. You can go half health with massive health bonuses and still stay there for a long period of time and take multiple hits and not die to being pushed over by a snowflake. It's really, really effective. But again, Igneous Shields, Dragon Blood, Bone Shields, and the Undeath passive are all much more beneficial the higher your health. Now, of course, you do want to get this as well. You do have a health reduction bonus, uh, debuff even as a vampire, and you want to make sure that the severity of that is kind of pushed down a bit. There's no point going stage three or anything like that because you get this bonus here, you get this bonus here, and you're going to be using vampire abilities anyway on this particular build, whether it be invigorate and drain or misform. So you're going to be stage four all the time anyway. Don't worry about fire. It won't kill you unless you just stand in it without doing anything. If you just run over to a fireball on the floor and just go, hey, I'm here. It's going to kill you. Block. Keep your buffs up. All that good stuff. Actually play the game. Don't just stand there and, and then die and blame vampire. If you did, it's your fault. Vampire is crazy strong. Now... We don't need Fighter's Guild abilities per se, but we do sometimes kill stuff by accident. When that happens, if it's Undead Daedra or Werewolf, you will gain 9 ultimate from it with this passive. So, so get it. Makes sense. These ones aren't necessary, but this one definitely is. Now, we also have Undaunted, which you must get. If you take a Synergy, and you will be taking Synergies, you're in a melee position, you'll have loads of them. You will gain back 4% of your overall resources. Stamina, Magicka, and Health. Every single synergy. Take them all. Don't scream at people for taking your synergies. They're not yours. They're everyone's. But take every one that you can see. Now, this also increases your max health, stamina, and magicka based on each piece or each type of armor worn. We're actually only wearing one type. We're wearing heavy, which will give us a 2% across the board. Our stats are so low and reliant on us having high recovery and working on our own sustain that the additional 2% um, for another light piece is not worth it. And our health bonus will actually be the same. Because if we have two less heavy pieces, we lose two bonuses in our cons in our Juggernaut. But if we have one light, one medium, we gain that back. So our health stays the same. Our stats go up really, really tiny amount. But we also lose resistances, bonuses to constitution and stuff like that. So it's actually a negative effect to mess with those stats. So have seven heavy. Take advantage of this health bonus and the 2% across the board and you'll be just fine. Now we don't need any in here. We are... Don't... Don't cry... We are an Imperial. Now, previously this build was an Orc, and I know I really hate changing races. In fact, I did try this with the Orc as it was, and the Orc is still absolutely perfect. It's got 2k max stam across the board. It's got 1k max health, and it does heal off of its uh, direct damage once every, what, six, five or six seconds. So it does still work very, very well. It is still extremely effective. So if you do love the Orc and you still want to be the Orc, be it. It's absolutely fine. It's not negative in the slightest. But the Imperial has got some really nice bonuses now. And that is that you get a 2k max health bonus, which is higher. You get a 2k max stam, which is the same. But you also get the red diamond passive, which reduces the cost of all of your abilities. All abilities and ultimates. So sustain is up. Also, when you deal direct damage, you heal yourself for 379. And you restore 333 magicka and stamina once every 5 seconds. If you're taunting or heavy attacking, you will be counted as direct damage, so you will get those resources back. Our sustain is actually so much better than it was before on the Imperial, so this is a really, really nice change. It looks like they're tiny, tiny stats, but once you stack it on top of Constitution, your heavy attack, your Igneous Shields, your other bonuses to sustain that we've already talked about, this does add up a lot. So I would highly recommend the Imperial. You can go Nord if you want, but you've got to watch your resistances because you're going to go too high. Um, you can also stay Orc. So if you like the Orc as it is, keep it. But this is really, really handy. And this also, like I said, affects your ultimates as well. Your ultimates are cheaper. Your abilities are cheaper. It's feckin' awesome. Now, finally, the most important passive in the game, in my opinion. Medicinal use. There's an alchemy guide in the description showing you how to get alchemy to max in 15 minutes flat you don't have to keep your points in here if you don't intend on making potions you can just dump them all once you get 50 put three in here and use your skill points elsewhere but medicinal use will increase your potion duration by 30 percent now that is very important because we are using tripods if you don't know what they are where the hell is my slotable items there we are they are here now this will give you a heal instantly for using it it will give you magic back instantly for using it and it will give you stamina back instantly for using it and at the same time you will have health recovery stam recovery and mag recovery across the board increased by 20 percent for 47.6 seconds now we do have major fortitude already so that's not necessary we do have 
uh, major endurance already, so that's not necessary. So the stamina and the health recovery on our dragon blood. But we do want the magical return, so that's really, really handy. But at the same time, of course, we want all three resources to be full, so tripods is the most effective way to do that. So you want these as much as you possibly can, so you can fill all three resources as and when you need to. You've got two choices on this, however. You can keep it running 100% of the time, or you can just use it as and when you need it. But for doing so, of course, you will defeat the cooldown with all these recovery bonuses. So it's really, really handy. Now, we're going to get into the gear. Now, you can have this in any order. It doesn't matter. In fact, on the live server, I use um, the named weapon and shield, which are quite easy to get hold of. Which is in the guide anyway. Um, so don't worry if you aren't sure where to get those. It's in the guide. It's from Imperial City Prison. But the sword and board on this particular setup is slightly different. But it's the same gear. So, you want Kalenway from cloud rest now this doesn't have to be on your sword and board and it doesn't have to be perfected it can be the regular version and the only thing you'll lose is 1k max health but doesn't matter what pieces are where it doesn't matter whether it's jewelry body sword or board as long as you have five pieces of these two sets on each bar so when you swap you always benefit now we're using a defending trait as some of you may know the infused on a one-hander did get reduced it was balanced out so it makes a lot more sense now so crush is not necessarily that strong on, on a one-hander it's actually a lot more effective on a two-hander because it gives its full bonus so in those instances if you are one of those people you can utilize an ice staff on the back bar with wall of elements and that will constantly keep proccing the crusher enchant at full strength this build isn't using it but you can if you want to however since we're not what i'm using instead is these shiny potions. So sword and board, defending and nern home to get the most out of your resistance. This set will give you max health, minor agus, reducing the amount of damage you take, healing received, and an additional max health if you have perfected, but one less if you don't. And after successfully blocking, you have a 50% chance to grant empower to three allies within 15 meters, increasing their damage done by their next light attacks by 40% and can happen once a second. So every single second, if you're blocking, you have a chance to buff your group. It's an actual tank set which buffs your group. And if you have optimized DPS players out there which know exactly what they're doing and are utilizing light attacks like they should be, especially since their potential for damage is so high, this will benefit them a lot. So this you want five pieces of, make sure it's on both bars. Now the poison we're using, instead of a glyph, because the, the damage shield glyph has been reduced on this particular setup, the poison is activated by using weapon abilities or light attacks so if you use a taunt or you light or heavy attack you can actually proc this with a 20 percent chance to do so and it has a 10 second cooldown now for four seconds if this is activated you will gain immunity to knockdown or roots or anything like that so while we've got this on our skill here which we activate once every 30 seconds which lasts six seconds with a 24 second downtime unless we reapply it we can also reapply this for four and a half seconds almost every 10 seconds just by staying in the fight so we have a built-in immunity to knockdown so if you are really risky with your heavy attacks but you accidentally mess it up you you actively proc immovable potions for immovable last 12 seconds with a 45 second cooldown overall these only have a 5.6 second cooldown so you can keep this up a lot, a hell of a lot. So just utilize those as much as you can if you like them. I will put in the guide how to make them. And these are very, very useful. They make you tanky as hell inside CC situations. Also, not to mention, if you use this in a situation where you are rooted, this will actually break free. So it's very, very handy. Now, the back bar is the same, sword and board on the front, sword and board on the back, but the poison on the back bar, because I'm not using any glyphs, if you do a light or a heavy attack or a weapon ability, so say for example heroic slash, you have a chance to proc this poison, which will actually give you 238 stamina back once a second for 6 seconds with a 4 second gap. So while you're in between swap and bars, always sneak in a light or a heavy attack. That bonus to recovery, by the way, does work while you're blocking. So, if it activates and you're blocking, you will still gain resources. So these, instead of being active glyphs that you have to keep up all the time, these are things that basically give you bonuses just for staying in the fight. They're very, very powerful indeed, but if you can get to grips with these, then of course you can utilize them very, very well and be really tanky and really good with your sustain. However, if you don't like any of this stuff, you can of course just take them off and you can keep to a basic damage glyph 
uh, damage shield glyph, which will stack with your damage shields, or you can perhaps use a weapon and spell damage reduction, or something to that effect, or even a stamina return. It's entirely up to you, but these are really, really fun. Another one is, of course, you've got a potion here, a poison rather, which which adds minor breach and minor fracture for three and a half seconds with a 10 second cooldown. So they'll be down for seven and a half, uh, six and a half seconds. It's not massive, but if you want to utilize something like this, you can. These are things that aren't used very often on tanks, but now that people aren't necessarily using the full infused crusher anymore because of the way they balance things, this is now an option and a very viable one at that. Now, so we've got five pieces Galenway because I'm waffling and the other set is leeching. It's still leeching. Max health, two heal and receive bonuses, which stack with our mind of vitality, our Daedric power passives, and our heavy armor passives, and this passive set bonus on here and everything like that. We've got all these different heal and receive bonuses, which all stack. Now, why is this important? When you take damage, you have an 8% chance to summon a poison cloud under the enemy's feet, whichever one hits you. That's actually a very high chance because you are getting hit all the time. Now, when this fires, you will do damage once a second in area of effect for five seconds, and you will be healed for 100% of the damage caused. Now, the damage caused itself is something that will give you a heal. The heal itself will stack off of healing received or healing taken, and it also stacks with healing done because you are doing the healing. So all your healing received bonuses and your igneous shields, increasing major mending, will improve the strength of this. Also, because it does poison damage, it can proc a poison status effect, which then lines up alongside your combustion passive to give you 500 stamina back once every five seconds as well. As well as your poison on the back, which can give you stamina back, as well as your igneous. You can see where we're going with this. Everything is interlocking together to keep you in the fight. Your sustain and your survivability is nuts. Now, this is from Imperial City Prison, by the way. Um, you can do it normal. It doesn't matter what difficult it's on, and then just... Um, upgrade the gear as and when you see fit. Make sure you put health on everything. On here, you want to put um, health on the shield. And obviously, we've got poison on the weapon. All the armor, you want health on everything. It doesn't matter, again, what order anything is in. You can have body pieces of one set and sword and board of the other with the jewelry. Or you can mix and match as long as you've got five on both bars. Now, the last set, which has been changed, is Stone Keepers. Now, this is from... Frost Vault, the new dungeon. You will need to do it on Vet to acquire this, and you will need Undaunted Keys to get the shoulder, but you want Heavy Helmet and Heavy Shoulder. Now, what this does, this will give you Max Stamina, Max Magic, and Max Health on the One Piece. And then, when you block an attack, you gain a charge of enemy energy, which you stack up six times. You can only take one per second, but once you stack up six of them, you release the energy, and you restore 5.3k Stam and Magic and 6k Health. This can happen once every 14 seconds after the charge has gone. So once it's gone, boom, and you've got your resources back, the timer for 14 seconds starts again. So, again, on your sustain, stamina back from this, high mag recovery, potions, which give you boost of all your resources back plus recovery. Then, just for blocking, you can get all your resources back, which is insane. And also, just for blocking, you actually effectively buff your group as well. So you get resources back and buff the group at the same time. During so, of course, because you get hit while you're blocking, you heal. It all interlocks. And because your resources are so well managed, you can keep up damage shields for your group. This is a, a flat out resource gain buff and protection build overall. Now, one more thing that we haven't noted, of course, is the overall traits. What you want is reinforced on the helmet, the shoulders and the chest with 900 on the shield. Then you want Sturdy on the last four pieces. That will give you enough block cost reduction alongside your champion points. And on the jewelry, you want to have healthy on everything with mag recovery on everything. That is why our mag recovery is so high because we have the recovery from our potion. We have the recovery from our food. And if you look in our stats, we're on 2.5k almost. Now, how do we apply this and how strong is it? You are never, ever going to have to do this. You're never going to have to do this. But... We are going to run in here and just grab everything, and you can see how strong it is. Now, since we're going to have to block a lot, we can alter our food. And we'll go with a little bit more max stamp. I'm going to run in here and pull absolutely everything. There's going to be a few things you have to keep an eye on here, including immovable and recoveries and resistances and all that good stuff. So keep your resist buff up, keep your dragon blood up. We'll just run all the way through. We'll grab everything. By the way, if you've seen this build before, you will... 
probably know that this is what I usually use to test it. Kind of extreme mode. One more thing, by the way, if you're using Mist Form, yes, it does make you go faster, but while it's active, your magical recovery is stopped. So just bear that in mind. Now, these guys at the end here can knock you over. They do some nasty shit. So we're going to grab everything. I'm going to run out of a bit of resources here. Use a bit of Stam. Now, I'm going to block a little bit more often than I would. Keep an eye on the resources. Now, if you can heavy attack between mechanics, that's going to help you a lot. So make sure you do. Block ult is oh shit. Now, that counts as blocking, so your helmet set does proc from it. Here it goes. Boom. Fill up those resources. No problem. Now, the reason I'm healing all the time is because leeching, as you can see all that poison flying around, is constantly procking. It procs all the time, and I am healing my ass off just by keeping the damage shield up to give myself major mending to boost it. Now, resources just went straight back up again. Absolutely insane. If you look in my buff timers, you'll see a, a red circle with a dude in the middle. A red square, sorry, with a circle with a guy in the middle. That is my immovability from my potions or poisons. We'll try and get that back up again. Here comes a resource gain. It's back up. Disgusting. This is without really actively keeping a resist buff up. You have to make sure you do that. I slipped a little bit. I'm not struggling in the slightest, and I'm holding block a lot more than I normally would. Because that monster set is just giving me all my resources back. Every 14 seconds, block six times, boom, it fills it back up. There it goes again. Resist buff fell off, whoops. Block ulti for oh shit. Heavy attack of resources back, keep your damage shields up. We can be full health by the time. There you go, full everything. Not struggling at all. And then my helmet's about to go again. Look for the mouse on the buff timers. Stamina's up all the time. Don't forget your resist buffs and your dragon blood. Easy. Now, remember what I said about the heavy attacks with Misform? They're heavy attacking you. They won't knock you down. They can't do it. So, again, you will never, ever, ever, ever have to fight this many enemies at once. It's absolutely unnecessary. But it just goes to show the potential of your ability to survive and still maintain your resources and show off your shiny buffs and bonuses and shit. There we go. We actually died. Good. Um, the trick to that, obviously, is if you move the enemies too much, they leave the leeching heals. You will then, obviously, um, not heal from it. So you need to get a new procs up. So hopefully that gives you some idea of how long you can survive. If you run away and leave your leech and stuff on the floor and enemies aren't healing you, obviously you have to struggle a little bit. But this is without a healer. If you are in proper content, not going against that massive army there on your own, um, you're not going to have that many enemies. You are going to have a healer with you. And you don't require much healing. Which means instead of you going down to 10k health every 5 seconds and a healer having to constantly breath of life the crap out of you and somebody else in the group dies because they didn't get a heal because you selfishly took it, then you can stay up above your main resources. You can keep yourself healthy. You can buff the group and protect them. And those really expensive single target or very few target heals can actually go towards people that need it. So your healers can actually heal and you can actually tank and protect from underneath all these shiny buffs. Now, one more thing to consider is the strength of your dragon blood. I did note that it was 45% of your missing health. Now, when you go very, very low health, obviously Vampire kicks in, you take less damage, your heal is more effective because you're lower health. But there's a bigger bonus to that in the champion points, and I'm now going to get to that section now. So in the blue tree, that's where that's relevant. Now, first of all, 72 points into Ironclad to reduce the amount of direct damage we take. We're going to take loads of it. We're the tank. We need this. 56 points into Hardy to reduce all the damage we take from physical poison and disease by 12%, and furthermore the same with uh, flame, frost, shock, and magic damage. So we've got balanced stats across the board there. 18% reduction to damage over time as well. We are going to take damage over time, of course, so make sure you utilize this. Now, we've also got access to Unchained. Unchained is a 120 CP point ability, so if you have 120 in this tree, you can access it. And if you break free, and you will, you'll get stunned occasionally. If you break free, your next stamina ability used within 5 seconds is reduced by 80%. So if you have to break free, the next ability you should use should be Bone Shield or Immovable, because it's 80% cheaper. So keep an eye on all your... Uh, micromanagement kind of stuff. If you do break free, hit one of those abilities, it'll cost you nearly bugger all. 
Now, 90 points in a quick recovery to give yourself a 5% bonus to healing received. Again, this does stack with all the healing received bonuses we have, and it pushes the leeching as well, so you heal much, much more. Also, 19 points into physical resistance because we do have a lower resistance to physical because as a DK, you get 3300 in spell resistance, but you get nothing in physical. So we've plugged the gap there just so that when we do get the minor bonuses to buffs and resistances from our group, we can actually hit cap. Also, at the same time, consider that if you res someone, you take 15% less damage. And yes, you can heal from leeching inside of that and use a block ulti. So this is disgusting. And you will give people magic a recovery. Not massive amount, but it will give them recovery when they get up from a res from yourself because you've got this passive here. Now, 48 points into Warlord so that we reduce the cost of break free. We do want to do that. We don't want to use all of our stamina to break free. Plus, don't forget, of course, for doing so, you can use a stamina ability that's cheaper. 75 points into Tenacity to give us back more resources when we heavy attack, and 75 points into Recovery as well, so that we have higher recovery. Don't go any more into these, you need to hold 25 points more in order to get 1%, and that's the only way to actually increase it, so don't waste them. 48 points in here could have been lost doing nearly nothing here, so use your points effectively and don't mess with too many diminished returns. Go as far as you can, not further. Six points into tumbling just gives a tiny bonus to dodge roll reduction. It's not massive, but it'll help. And also, this is important. This gives us 66 points here for 22% reduction to block cost, which does stack with our Absorb Magicka ability, our DK passives, our sturdy traits, all that good stuff. It does all stack up quite nicely. Of course, it's heavy diminished returns. So if you go too high into it, it will be less effective. But we're actually at a very nice uh, middle, middle to happy ground at the moment. I think it's like 650-ish per block at the moment for us. But you can go higher into it with your traits if you want from your jewelry. But if you do, just consider that you'll lose mag recovery. So be careful with those. 75 points into Blessed, so that all of our healing done is increased. We have Dragon Blood, and we have Leeching, and we want the heals to be higher. So, fair enough, but 75 points into here. Any more than this will cost 25 points for 1%, because decimals do not count, so it is wasted. Don't waste your points. 56 points here into Critical Damage and Critical Healing with Magicka abilities. Now, this is essential. Leeching cannot crit, so we don't get a healing crit bonus from that. The only heal we have is Dragon Blood. Now, our crit chance is quite low. But we do want to make sure that our crit heal is high. Now, we can make sure we get a guaranteed crit heal. Now, how you do this is here. And this is what I was talking about when it comes to utilizing your dragon blood effectively. In certain content, in certain situations, you will take a lot of projectile uh, magic damage or just magic damage in general. Now, if you are blocking these spells, every single one of them will stack up. And you'll see a symbol just like the screen you're seeing now with the mage in the middle. It's a tiny, tiny buff. When it goes to three you will be able to take advantage of the bonus to this, which is your next Magicka ability used within five seconds will always be a critical strike. Now, that applies to magic damage, of course, but it also applies to magic heals. Now, if we hit Igneous Shields first, that doesn't consume the buff because it doesn't have an effect that can be utilized via a crit. However, Dragon Blood does. Dragon Blood can crit. So if you hit Igneous first, you keep this bonus. Then as soon as you hit Dragon Blood, you are guaranteed a critical strike or critical heal with that, which means this big bonus to healing, this big bonus to the crit itself, plus the Dragon Blood bonus for giving you a percentage of your max health, plus Igneous Shields, all combined will give you a guaranteed max health crit heal. So keep an eye on your buffs and debuffs. If you see a tiny champion point symbol, which is blue, which replicates this screen right here, and you see a tick in it saying three, your next Dragon Blood will crit, guaranteed. So pay full attention to this tiny, tiny passive. It is essential. Three points into Shattering Blows for no good reason whatsoever. We've got three points left. We're wasting them. Now in here, 72 points into Thermoturge because this does actually boost our leeching. I know on the tooltip it shows that it is boosted by Master at Arms, but it is not. It is boosted by damage over time. The higher the damage of the leeching, the higher the heals, and the bigger the healing received, and so on and so forth. It stacks up and up and up and up, and the same applies to Mighty as well because it is poison damage. So 64 points into here for this, 72 points in here for this. And above all, because we have 75 points in this tree, we now have the ability to utilize the off-balance bonus. So if anything is off-balance, not only will we get double resources back from a heavy attack, but we'll also do more damage. Meaning the leeching does more damage, meaning our heals are higher again, stacking and stacking and stacking. And remember, because we have such high health and our bonuses benefit from high health um, pools, 
we can go lower and lower and lower than most others as far as percentage is concerned. So 20% for us is quite a healthy area for us to receive a decent heal or have high mitigation for vampire versus someone that's much lower health. Which means we can comfortably deliberately go down to low health and if we do hit 20% we will gain major heroism giving us a 3 ulti regen every 1.5 seconds for 8 seconds. And that does stack with minor from your heroic slash if you're using it. So all of these look a bit weird but they are chosen for a very specific reason. So hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring. Just remember, you do need to keep up your heavy attacks every so often. If you do block, you'll buff your group. If you do continue to block, you'll get resources back. If you keep your damage shields up, you'll protect the group. If you stay alive, the healer can heal the people that need it rather than just selfishly giving it all to you. It helps a lot. But there are options, as I've said in the video already, and if you'd like the previous setup better, then you can, of course, still stick to that. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. That is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside of the channel, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website zionandgaming.com, where all the written guides are. There is a forum there for you guys as well. It's not an inbox for me. I've already got enough messages elsewhere, but that is for you to speak to each other about the channel or the game or whatever. And of course, a live stream on Twitch every night from 10 p.m. UK time, unless I announce otherwise on Twitter. Once again, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.